Hello guys, so this is not actually about how often you talk or how little you talk. It's about appreciating that fine line of knowing when not to. Law 4. Always say less than necessary. So I'm going to give you reasons why it's quite important to keep what you say to people at the barest minimum. Number 1. When your fame has gone ahead of you. Now it's a lot of people out there, when you apply for a job basically you send your CVs in advance, right? Or you've cooked up some amazing profile on LinkedIn that you send in advance to people. So when recruiters basically see these things, they call you in for an interview on account of what they've seen. Whether it's your CV, whether it's your LinkedIn profile. The whole idea is this. Whatever you've sent ahead of you has taken your fame ahead of you. It has already spoken volumes for you. So there's an impression you've left with people when they see these things. When you now come for an interview, it is your duty to maintain that impression and not to destroy it. So you are either building on it or you're maintaining it, right? And the challenge with talking a lot in the course of your interview is that you may make the sad mistake of destroying this impression you've already sent ahead of you. When people already know you for something based on what you have marketed to them, do your possible best to keep your conversations at the barest minimum so that whatever you sold in advance will keep on speaking volumes for you. So let me give you this kind of example. Let's say your CV or your resume has communicated that you have a high level of competency on a given subject matter. However, you said nothing about job experience. Now, when your recruiters look at this, or your would-be employers look at this, and they see this high level of competency, aptitude, stated already in your CV or stated already in your LinkedIn profile because you've been writing a couple of articles about these very thing. They have been sold on the idea that you understand the practical aspects of what you're speaking to. However, when they call you in the course of the interview and they're talking to you, rather than you just maintaining your aptitude about that very thing that you know, you choose to go ahead and keep on talking and talking, well, you know, I really don't have any experience in this, but I do a lot of reading. No one asks you. Don't be so quick to keep on giving information that you were not asked because you may end up unveiling that very mystery about you. And the moment you do that, oh, he doesn't have an experience, so all of this is just reading, reading and more reading, you may end up losing the opportunity. So the moment you figure out, you know what, he's not exactly what it seems on paper, you may end up losing the opportunity. Don't let your own tongue cut you off from reaching your mark. Point two, in building a first impression. Now, impressions are everything, more particularly the first. And I've come to realize that when people meet you for the first time, it's always just simple to introduce yourself and try to understand what each other are doing to create a future rapport. Now, the future rapport can be at that very same time or day or it can be at a mutual place where both of you tend to meet on a certain different date. Now, the moment you meet someone for the first time and you start unveiling every single aspect of you, you don't know for certain if your personality is exactly what that person is looking for to partner with or to do business with. So in creating rapport, it may pay you better to take your time and just build that relationship. And in building that relationship, you want to tone down on anything and everything concerning you. And you want to survey the environment where this person is and try and figure out things about that person. So in saying less than necessary, you're trying not to say much about who you are. You're trying not to say much about yourself, but try to learn as much as you can about the other individual that you're with. First impression is key in every given situation and your first impression can easily catapult to the next level or keep you exactly where you are. But it's always going to work with you. 
trying to be a bit vague about who you are and be more open to understanding who this potential business partner or potential employee or a potential employer actually is. Point three, when you're trying to control your narrative. Now your narrative is basically everything. It's more like your reputation, what people tend to say about you when you are not in the room. And talking less basically gives a lot of help in doing this. Now, when you're in an environment, remember, your intentions of your heart are expressed in the words you put out there. And it's not just the quantity of words, it's about the quality of your words as well. Now, the kind of speech you put out there communicates how your inside person feels. So it's about what your inside person is saying. Now, whatever your inside person basically says, that's what your mouth gives out, right? Now, if you have intentions in your heart that are not necessarily in tune with what the society is used to, or not necessarily in tune with what the organization you're working with is used to, or what everyone else is trying to accomplish, which may be different from what you are trying to accomplish, then you want to say less as much as possible. Remember, you're working in an organization. And a lot of the rules that apply in friendship does not necessarily apply over there. Point number four, saying less than necessary helps you control your temperament. I'm talking about your state of mind at any given point in time, yeah? So when you were really, really upset or you're really, really excited, try and control the level of words that escape from your mouth. And I'm using the expression escape, it's deliberate because I know at that given point in time, sometimes you can't even control yourself. So try and limit what you say on a general basis. Try and limit what you say during that kind of situation because words, they're quite powerful. And once let out, you can't take them back. It's gone, it's gone, it's gonna do the harm it's designed to do, whether you intended it or not. So during this period of your life, you would want to probably keep quiet as much as you can. You want to be as vague as you can during those situations. I mean, your mannerism itself is already showing exactly how you feel. If you are high up on sugar or you are quite low on anger, your facial expressions, your body language already speaks volumes of how you feel on the inside. Quite clearly, if you are irritable, at that point in time, you really don't want to open your mouth. It's very important. Saying less than necessary is not even it. This is saying nothing at all. Try to avoid communications during that period. If someone comes to you, answer monosyllabic because you may end up saying something that you just can't take back. Really. So at that point in time, yeah, talk as little as possible. Okay, I had to put on my jacket for this one. Point number five, speaking less allows you to appear more powerful and mysterious. You see, especially when it comes to first impressions, when people don't know you as someone of many words, but understand you as someone of vague expressions than clear and mediocre expressions, you tend to appear more powerful in the room. Because everyone is quite concerned with what you have to say next. Everybody latch onto whatever words you speak out, especially if the words that you actually put out there brings value. Or the words you actually put out there appears very sophisticated to people. Everyone is quite interested in what you have to say next. And this is a very common trend in organizations. The most powerful people in any organization are not the people that you see always communicating with just about any and everybody on any and every given situation. They pick their words carefully. They are quite calm in their dispositions. They are quite sophisticated in their delivery. They know also how to employ brevity when talking while expressing more of what they have to say in the way they look and the way they act as opposed to how much they put out there. Remember, it's not about the quantity of the words, it's about the quality of what you say. So let's employ a strategy right now. Keep what you say as brief as possible and let your mannerism and your gestures speak the rest. Now my jacket is off for the next thing I'm about to say on this very subtopic. And that is about it helps you appear more mysterious, especially for the ladies in the room. Now, 
you tend to understand that the reason why your man finds you attractive every given point in time is because you keep on appearing more mysterious to them, right? So you don't want to put yourself out there on your first date and basically say everything there is to say about you. You want to keep your mystery. You want him to keep on figuring you out and discovering you at every given point of engagement between both of you, right? So you don't want to go out there and say every and any single thing concerning your life on your first date. Likewise, in any other environment you find yourself, mystery is very important. When you're shrouded in some level of vagueness, when people don't fully understand the sort of person you are, it makes you quite interesting to them. And remember, when you're interesting to people, it gives you an advantage. It means you're always at the corner of their recesses. You're always at the corner of their mind. They're always trying to figure it out. Who is this individual? What makes this individual tick? What makes you tick? Are you all thinking out there what makes me tick? Try and stay as mysterious as possible too. And saying less than necessary helps you achieve that. Now, I know a lot of people want to be verbally expressive when they're going through a conflict. And I am equally guilty in this too. But hey, this is a learning process and we're both learning it together, right? So I've come to realize that you don't always have to be the person who says a lot in the course of a conflict. Oftentimes, your silence and facial expression of your displeasure in that very situation is good enough in solving that very problem far better than your volumes of words could ever solve now i know people get more into trouble when they say quite a lot than when they just express their displeasures in it and sometimes the most effective way to reach to people is not by telling them every single thing there is to tell on their earth Sometimes it's just by showing them how displeased you are. Just your mannerism. Few words coupled with your mannerism are more effective a tool in delivering a message of your displeasure than your uncountable spoken words. Remember, when you put these words out there, you can never take them back. In the course of speaking, if you say something wrong, that wrong will be used to judge you for quite a number of times. And we are humans, remember, human beings are not known or remembered for all the good they have achieved. They are known for that one screw up. Don't put yourself through that one screw up, okay? Okay, so for every general rule, there are often exceptions to it, right? And there is definitely an exception to this one. So it's not in every situation that you choose to be a man of few words. Sometimes you actually have to speak up, speak out and speak more. And this is one of those exceptions. When your loyalty or integrity is in doubt in the organization you find yourself or amongst your business partners. You want to be more verbally expressive in this situation. Why is that? When you choose to be vague, the people who already doubt your loyalty will think that you're being shady and you're going to be transferring to them some level of insecurity as to their relationship with you and it will probably provoke them to want to cut you out so in these situations you always want to speak up you always want to clear the air in the room you always want to state what the exact issue is and try and resolve it as quickly as possible oh the reason why you were thinking this way about me is because i failed to communicate this to you i'm quite sorry i'm communicating it right now this is the situation the way it is not exactly how Mr. B or Mrs. C puts it Mr. A. You need to understand Mr. A that I am not this kind of person. I will tell you A, B, C, D, E to help you understand how it is. Now most times when you are being a man of vagueness, you tend to make people feel that there is something that you are hiding from them. If they don't already see you as someone of immense power and authority, they tend to be quite suspicious of you. So, being more expressive in that very situation helps you clear the air of that suspicion. So, it's more about figuring out the environment you're in and figuring out your role in that environment. And when you can just oppose these two things, then you can figure out for yourself, should you be more vague, cryptic, mysterious, or should you be more verbally expressive, out there in the open, communicating with people, so you can tell yourself, perhaps, in your own work organizations, 
and there are certain units of people that you're going to find yourself around that you'll be more quiet around, right? And there are certain other people that you should be more open with. And it's all because you're placed in the situation of being more respected through vagueness while at the same time dousing suspicion by being more open with your words. Hey guys, so that's all I have for you today. Now, if you're new to this channel, show your brother some love and hit the subscribe button down there. Now, remember to share these videos across all the platforms. Give me a thumbs up, okay? And keep the comments in the comment section below going. Let me know exactly what you think about this video. Now, don't forget to watch other videos. You have a lot of recommendations and suggestions. I've been popping up on your screen. Now, you probably see a good recommended video by the side as well that speaks to me. Go check that video out. And till next time we see, stay undefeated.